Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Just a couple announcements before we start worshiping this morning. Uh, today at 11.30, we will be meeting at Ohio Avenue School. We will be meeting there, and uh, we'll have a prayer time, and we will also be celebrating Holy Communion. I will do Holy Communion during this worship today, but if you'd rather just wait, feel free to wait, and you can come celebrate Communion with us um, at 11.30 up at the school. You can also celebrate Communion both times, but it'll be great to be able to see everybody and to celebrate the sacraments together. Woo! Um, Deb will also be starting Bible study back again on Wednesday this week at noon. So if anybody would like to join for Bible study at noon, there's going to be a lunch, correct? Right. And then we'll have Bible study. So I hope you will join for, in for Bible study at noon on Wednesdays. Please, please, please wear a mask and we will set everybody up six feet apart um, to ensure social distancing. But masks will be required. So... Um, we're starting slowly to, to start things back, but worship, we will still continue to worship this way for a while. And with that, I think we will ready our hearts for worship.
Maybe your answer about discipleship and belief in the triune God is grounded in your belief that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, we read in Mark 3.11 that even the unclean spirits know that. Amen. We are told whenever unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and shouted, You are the Son of God. Is belief in the triune God just that? Something you believe? Well, again, Scripture may challenge that. The book of James says in chapter 2, If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet we do not supply those bodily needs. What is the good of that? Faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Amen. Faith is more than simple belief. For too many years, Christianity in America has been about right behavior. It has been about the church. Yeah. We have hid behind doctrine and worship. In seminary, we had a pastor even come talk to us about how to stay neutral, how to not take a stand that will offend the congregation. Mm. When Michael and I were living in North Carolina a few years ago, I can remember having a very long but disturbing conversation with a member of a Lutheran church who talked for quite a while about how their interim pastor had had the nerve to preach about issues like Black Lives Matter. He said that it is fine if people want to believe in that, but it has no place in the church. People of God, I think the time has come for all of us to really examine what our theology or our beliefs about God are. To seriously ask ourselves, what does it mean to say that you believe in the triune God? For too long we have let our theology or our beliefs about God be separate from our lived out human experience. Yes. For too long we have let our beliefs about God Say that God is in heaven, not here among us, not working with us, not working in us and through us. For too long we have let God's forgiveness and grace lead us to believe that God has no expectation of us or what we do for the kingdom. For too long we ourselves have played God, judging who is worthy and who is unworthy of God's love. For too long we have forgotten that life, all life, was created by God. Amen. That God created our bodies and our minds and declared them good. Amen. And because God declares us good, all life has value and dignity and worth. Yes. Thank you. We have gotten big heads and forgotten as human beings, we have no ability to judge fairly. Amen. And are therefore simply to respect and steward all life. Amen. To see everyone through God's eyes. That is why we are called to live among and walk alongside those for whom dignity has been denied and love has been withheld yeah. and for whom the circumstances of living and the power structures of this world have left trampled. Yeah. If what we believe does not speak directly to what we are seeing play out in the world right now, the tragedy and loss, the sickness and fear, the, value of the valuing of economic gain over human life, then we have some work to do. Amen. Amen. Despite all that is going on, our faith should give each of us the sure hope in a better tomorrow, a reason to fight for a better tomorrow. I'm not saying we are not to mourn, we will mourn, but we have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that as Psalm 30 says, weeping may linger for the night, but joy Lord. will come in the morning. Hallelujah. Amen. How we answer the question of what it means to believe in a triune God reminds me of Jesus' parable of the wise and the foolish builder found in Matthew 7. Jesus said, I gave you my word. I gave you my word like the promise we hear today that he will be with us always. And Jesus says, if we hear that word and act on it, then we will be like the wise men who build his house on a rock. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew, but the house stood.
stood firm. It didn't fall because it was built on a rock. Amen. But Jesus says when we hear his words and don't act like it on it, like the foolish man, we are building our house on sand. When the storms come and the rain beats down and the wind blows, the house built on the sand will fall because sand moves and shifts and changes with every storm. Jesus gave us his word and promise that he will be with us always. But that promise is not an assurance of personal comfort. Instead, it's a promise to experience life with us. We are not to simply learn about God. We are instead to encounter God. God is Trinity, Father and Creator, Son and Redeemer, Holy Spirit and Sustainer. When we encounter God as Creator, we learn that God the Father has the ability to make a way out of no way. As humans, we are limited to what we can know and can imagine. But God is able to take all the junk, all the stuff that we make and do, and make something beautiful out of it. That is why in Romans 8, Paul says, If God is for us, who is against us? Nothing is ever hopeless with God. The same God who created the world is the same God that will save the world. Yes. We have no reason to fear. God the Father is with us. Then when we encounter God as Son, we know that Jesus knows firsthand what it is like to be human. God knows our pain. He knows our struggles. God knows our limitations. God came as Emmanuel, God with us, so that we can know that we are not alone. Jesus walks with us, even carries us when needed. He is our light in a dark world and our truth in this craziness. When we live for Christ, Paul says in Romans 14, we belong to the Lord so that whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Amen. Because of Christ, we don't need to fear death. But Jesus also says we can also give all our burdens to him. Burdens like the injustice we are seeing now in the world. Burdens like not knowing what the future may bring. Burdens like the lies, corruption, and violence that seem to be happening before our eyes. We can trust that as as Jesus journeys with us in life, he sees it all. No evil deed as well as no selfless deed goes unnoticed. Jesus will judge everyone one day. Jesus will make things right. Not that we don't need to stand up for our black and brown brothers and sisters getting killed. We do. Yes. But we don't have to worry about people going unpunished. Amen. We have to remember that in God's kingdom, the first will be last and the last will be first. The lowly will be exalted and the exalted will be brought low. Jesus will come again and judge the living and the dead. Amen. And then we have God as spirit. We talked about the Spirit last week on Pentecost. When we encounter the Spirit, we are gifted beyond our wildest imaginations. The Spirit, she is our advocate and our teacher. She can take the hardest of hearts and change even them. It is the Spirit that gives us courage. We need to speak up for our neighbors and speak out against the injustice in the world. It is the Spirit that gives us the patience and the wisdom to navigate the troubled waters that lay before us as a nation. It is the spirit that gives us the peace that passes all understanding and the joy that will indeed come in the morning. I hope we can see that it is through Jesus' promise that he will never never forgive us that we see, experience, and live into God as Trinity. In 1945, as he sat in a prison facing his own execution, Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote a poem poem called The Stations on the Road to Freedom. I'd like to share a part of that poem that I believe speaks to where Christians find themselves in today's world. Choose and do what is right, not what fancy takes, not weighing the possibilities, but bravely grasping the real, not in the fight of ideas, but only in action is their freedom. Come away from our anxious hesitations into the storm of events, carried by God's command and your faith alone. Then freedom will embrace your spirit with rejoicing. 
just as God calls us to make disciples. Disciples that when made will join us in our desire to make earth as it is in heaven. God also promises to be with us, not just in theory or in words, but in the very real experience that is life. When we let him into our life, when we join him out in the world, God will wrap us up in a loving embrace that brings us into Trinity, into the amazing oneness of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.